think uh, in a lot of people's mind, this was something that was imminent. I think that uh, you think about uh, what Urban Meyer has been through, and particularly the health situation and everything else, that um, this was a, a situation that was probably coming down the pike and headed for some type of resolution. In recent weeks, he'd been asked any number of times to clarify his status uh, for the rest of this year, for 2019, going forward. And he always just kind of sloughed it off. He would give you a one word or a one sentence answer that he was good or I plan to coach, but it was nothing uh, defiant, nothing uh, very assertive, nothing that assured you that it was definitely going to be uh, what it uh, what you figured it would be, that, oh, yes, I'm definitely coming back next year. He never once said that. So I think in the minds of a lot of people, it was left open-ended. And today we gained that closure. Finally, we know that after the Rose Bowl that uh, Urban Meyer will be gone as the head coach at Ohio State. How much of this decision do you think is tied directly to the health issue and how much of it goes back to Zach Day? And that's obviously conjecture and speculation, but what would be your guesstimate? Well, I think the uh, turmoil and the adversity, everything uh, that he faced prior to the season of the suspension, uh, all the stress that accompanied that may have helped exacerbate his health situation. Maybe that's an oversimplification. This is something that he's been dealing with for 20 years, a cyst on his brain or his skull. And uh, he had surgery in 2014 to try and address it. But uh, again, uh, the problems continue to crop up. Uh, this year, he said even last year when they beat Penn State in that thrilling game in Columbus is when he first started uh, feeling some uh, twinges from it, and uh, it's been ongoing since then. And uh, really, I think late in the season, uh, a number of the different media outlets were reporting about what kind of pain he was in. Uh, one of the, the good friends he has in the media is Pete Thamel uh, with Yahoo Sports currently, and uh, – it was the day after the Maryland game, which was an overtime win for Ohio State, uh, where a lot of the day was spent watching Urban in agony, basically on the sideline. Uh, Pete Demel came out and uh, tried to portray him as a sympathetic figure, a person in, in deep pain, and began to question uh, the long-term stability of him coaching at Ohio State. So uh, that was just uh, over two weeks ago when those uh, stories really started to surface. So from that point on, it's been kind of a, a watch or a, uh, a vigil, I suppose, uh, in Columbus for when and if they would get any kind of further clarity on this situation. And uh, now today, obviously, uh, it came uh, to fruition and uh, Coach Meyer will be stepping aside after the Rose Bowl and it'll be Ryan Day taking uh, uh, taking over as the head coach going forward after that. Urban Meyer stepping down at Ohio State after seven seasons, 87 wins, nine losses, a uh, national championship in 2014, uh, three Big Ten championships in uh, 14, 17 and 18 and um, coming that close to a number of other championships, and, and we can discuss that uh, on through the, the coming weeks and so forth. But Dan, Steve, and I have chronicled many times right here uh, in the past. Steve, for a guy that is this into his profession, and anybody who coaches major college football is really into the profession. Otherwise, why do you, despite the money, uh, in addition to that, put up with the ridiculous amount of hours and the grind that it is to be a football coach at this level. Uh, but even well beyond that, to attain what he has, to achieve what he has, obviously he's been at some time, at some point um, obsessed with it, maybe tempered during his Ohio State stay. But still, this is his life. So I would think that this physical issue and then whatever the speculation is about the Zach day situation or the Zach Smith situation and how that plays into it, um, that this has to be an excruciatingly difficult decision for him to make. Even if it's a black and white decision that the health issue is this, you need to step down that this is, this is what he does. This guy is gunning. This is his dream job and he has it and he has this thing rolling and he has to step off the train. Yeah, it's kind of a sad day in that respect, and uh, it was an interesting press conference today because you had 
Urban Meyer announcing his retirement, Gene Smith basically talk, talking about how that all came about, and also introducing uh, Ryan Day as the replacement uh, going forward. And it was over 20 minutes in, I think, before Ryan Day was even asked a question because a lot of the focus, this is what happens when you're uh, having this kind of a seamless transition from a legend to another coach and uh, the winningest coach in the modern era of college football, to be quite honest. So uh, he's earned uh, every bit of the accolades that he's getting as a part of this. And, you know, it is a sad day, I think, for him and for his family that uh, he is stepping away. But the, the bigger issue is his health. And I think uh, he joked at the beginning of his remarks that it was the second uh, birthday of his grandson, uh, Troy, and that uh, his daughter is also expecting another child uh, after that. So uh, he's got so much more life to live and so many more things to enjoy. and. You just look at it and you say, um, there's more to life than uh, just your job or coaching or whatever it may be. And it's important, I think, going forward that he lives a healthy and happy life and is able to get the treatment he needs. Uh, I would never rule out the idea that he's not going to coach again. I, I think it's entirely possible. And I wouldn't begrudge him that. And I think uh, if that's what he wants to do someday, that's fine. I think from Ohio State's perspective, uh, they did not want to go through a period of limbo. And uh, I had suggested a leave of absence. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, that didn't uh, seem to be uh, uh, what anybody at Ohio State was looking for. So uh, or perhaps it wasn't doable. I don't know. Perhaps his condition is to such a state that uh, he's going to need to take a full year off or whatever it may be. And I think they did not want to lose Ryan Day and the prospect of him uh, taking over as the head coach going forward. Uh, some people are like, how do you uh, just elevate an assistant coach who has very little uh, head coaching experience, only the three games then uh, Urban Meyer was suspended earlier this season. I don't look at it so much as that. I think uh, you've got uh, situations out there. Uh, Lincoln Riley is now two years in at Oklahoma, elevated from assistant position, has two Big 12 championships, and put the Sooners in the playoff this year. So I don't know. I, I don't worry so much about that type of thing. Uh, I think that uh, for fans of Ohio State, they are just hopeful that uh, Urban Meyer can go on and lead the kind of uh, life and be happy that, uh, that he and be, lead that kind of life that he wants to lead going forward. Absolutely. So the quality of life so much more important than the wins and losses on the football field. And so if he's able to um, lead a productive life, hopefully uh, healthy life and um, channel the energy into maybe some other projects and in uh, charity work, uh, the athletic program. He talked about that. And obviously, most importantly, the relationships in his life and the family and the extended family. Um, there's always a question when somebody is this successful and this ingrained in a competitive, just fishbowl that this is uh, as either an athlete, which of course we know that the end of their, their tenure is is pretty brief because of the physical portion of it but for a coach that usually extends past the age of 54 if he's going to have issues channeling that competitive fire into something else and being able to exercise that yeah no question about it um <clears throat> you know it is rare to see uh somebody that uh holds a job at this level of that type of a school for such a long period of time um, you know, seven years. Uh, I'm sure he could have coached another four or five years had he been healthy. No question about it. I don't know that he was going to go another 10 years or that he needed to go another 10 years, but I think he would have liked to have brought home another national championship at Ohio State. That's obviously not going to be the case. They're going to play in the Rose Bowl against Washington, which will be his last game, at least as the Ohio State coach. And then from there, I guess we'll see what direction uh, his treatment and his health takes him. Um, I think that uh, Ohio State fans are understanding, I guess, of the situation. Uh, I think uh, from a stability standpoint, now was the time uh, to make this transition. This was about as smooth and seamless a transition, I think, as you're ever going to see. 
and a college program. And, uh, you know, perhaps now's the time for Ryan Day to pick up the ball and run with it. But, uh, again, Urban Meyer has been nothing short of uh, sensational uh, in his entire time as a head coach, Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, Ohio State, and, uh, you know, done nothing but uh, the best. And uh, three national championships, he and Nick Saban, the only two coaches in history to win the championship at two different schools. And uh, that says a lot right there in and of itself. We have uh, Steve Hellwagon on the line from Bucknots. It's the uh, 247 Sports Platform for Ohio State Athletics, athletics where he is a, a Big Ten senior writer. Uh, Steve, by any reasonable measurement, and you just alluded to it, uh, Urban Meyer was extremely successful at all the stops. Uh, Frank Leahy, Newt Rockney, the only coaches in history with a higher winning percentage, and that winning percentage is even six or seven points higher at Ohio State, pushing 91%, 85% overall. It's astounding. And then if you discard what those two gentlemen uh, accomplished because it's just a different game and look post-World War II, he is the winningest by percentage coach in college football, modern day college football, the last 75 or 80 years. That's that's just an astounding statement when you just make it in those terms. So by any reasonable measurement, and I'm underlining the word reasonable, he has been a great success. His Ohio State tenure, though, has been slightly marred, and I'm just talking on the field, by what could have been. It could have been overwhelmingly dominant. There were just a couple near misses that cost them from being able to complete great seasons. Yeah, our book, Undisputed Champions, available on eBay. Um, you know, again, winning the national championship is never an easy thing. Okay, Alabama has made it look easy, but it's not that easy. And uh, Ohio State overcame a ton of adversity in 2014 to win it and uh, to win it in the fashion that they did. So uh, all I will say is that uh, – that's probably his lasting legacy is that they were able to harness the human spirit for one uh, 12-month season and uh, put it all together and give Ohio State uh, uh, the number, I think, is their sixth consensus national championship, eighth overall. And, uh, you know, again, a year that uh, people will reflect on forever, that Alabama win is a program shaping victory and uh, – you know, I think Ryan Day, I think what the point I was driving to was uh, Ryan Day could go 33 and six for the next three years and be considered a failure just because of what he's matched up against with uh, the legacy that uh, Urban Meyer has left. But when you're given a chance to be the head coach at Ohio State, a five year contract, four and a half million dollars a year, guaranteed money, you never turn that down. I, the next guy who turns that down will be the first guy. So, um, you know, you think about it, he's got a tough act to follow. But I think what Gene Smith was was thinking about was the machinery and everything that uh, Urban Meyer put in place with uh, Mickey Marotti, the strength coach and the right-hand man, Mark Pantoni, the recruiting coordinator, uh, the assistant coaches and everything else. Gene Smith said there are 70 people employed inside the football facility now, they may not all be full-time football people. Maybe some of them double over on some other, some of the other sports that work out of that building. But that's just not something that you throw away uh, because the head coach is leaving and, and uh, throw open a, a lot of those jobs and say, okay, we're going to start over. Not when you've won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. Not when you've won 80-some games in seven years. You do the best thing that you can do is to maintain some stability, and then you couple that with the offense that Ryan Day put on the field this year with Dwayne Haskins. You understand he is a very special X's and O's coach as well. Whether he's going to be able to harness the human spirit as uh, Urban Meyer did these last few years or not remains to be seen. Uh, he seems like a very positive, upbeat person and a uh, can-do type of guy. So uh, I think his audition for the job in August and September helped put him over the top. And I think Ohio State football going forward is in good hands with Ryan Day. But I know Gene Smith will sleep well at night knowing 
at those other 69 people who work in that building, most of them, I don't know it'll be a clean sweep, but most of them will be back with the program in 2019. Steve Hellwagon joins us from Bucknuts. As Steve, last question here, as you allude to Brian, uh, Ryan Day, and I think there's one p- portion of this that uh, ties right into my question uh, as you got us started there, is obviously Ryan Day showed the football staff, showed the administration that he can take over a program for at least a limited period of time and it can run smoothly. So he stepped in and uh, he did all the right things during a very difficult time. And then he had to coach three games. And of course, they won all three games. Um, you, you you touched on two aspects of Urban Meyer's game, in quotes, that separates him. Is that his? he's got great teaching ability and he demanded that out of his coaches to be able to be teachers and to major in psychology himself and then uh, pass that on to his coaching staff. And then also to he wanted his teams to play angry and to play harder and tougher and with a determination that could not be matched by the the opposition and figured if I recruit as well as I do and then my kids play that hard, regardless of scheme, whether we're outwitting anyone, then that should equal big wins. And that's going to be a tough act to follow to be able to match that type of um coaching acumen, determination, psychology, all of that put together. Yeah, it's a very demanding thing that you're talking about. And I think that uh, there were games this year where some of that kind of got past Ohio State. I mean, they're trailing Nebraska at halftime, uh, trailing Maryland 17-3 to to start that game. They had some games this year. Uh, you know, as one of my best friends said, the committee basically kept Ohio State out of the playoff Uh, for a lot of the same reasons that we complained about this team all season long, they actually sat down and watched the game. So I think Meyer had a difficult time this year. Maybe it was because of his health, whatever it could have been, demanding that excellence out of his team. And there was some slippage. Now, did it result in a change in the record? Well, 12 and one's a pretty good record. Uh, Could they have been 13 and 0? I don't know. My mother-in-law likes to believe, and she's the biggest Ohio State fan on the planet, she likes to believe that Purdue would have beaten Alabama that night at West Lafayette, which may not be too far from the the case. Uh, David Blau was on fire. Rondale Moore on fire. So, uh, you know, whatever it may be, uh, Ohio State's got some issues that they've got to shore up. And I think uh, what Ryan Day said today is when they get done with the bowl game, they will come back to Columbus and they will make – assessments on areas that need improvement, whether it's through uh, a coaching change with a particular discipline, whatever it may be, uh, they're going to assess the program top to bottom and side to side once the Rose Bowl is done. And I would not rule out uh, one or two assistant coaching changes. They're going to have to hire an assistant coach to replace Ryan Day, presumably as the quarterback's coach, although you know He's going to continue to call plays. He's going to continue to coach the quarterbacks in some fashion or regard. So um, how that goes remains to be seen. But you have a very good point. Being the head coach in name is one thing. But being the head coach that demands uh, that type of performance, demands that type of effort out of his team and gets it on a consistent basis, that is a special guy. Nick Saban can do it. Uh, Dabo Sweeney can do it. Uh, There's different people across the country who have done it in some limited instances here and there. We've had some one-hit wonder national champions, you know, in recent years, you know, uh, Auburn, different places that, uh, you know, Fisher at Florida State that have had one just amazing magical year. But to have this type of act Excellence over a seven-year period, and really back to his Florida days, a fifth, third, well, I guess it'd be a 13-year period, six there and seven at Ohio State, is almost uncanny. So uh, he's got a tough act to follow, no question about it. He's learned a lot of great lessons working with Chip Kelly, working with Urban Meyer. Uh, so I think that uh, Ryan Day is a guy that uh, Ohio State fans can believe in and uh, I think next year is going to be a tremendous challenge for him. Uh, again, I have to go on the road to Michigan. Uh, you know, going to be just an interesting, interesting season, no doubt. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, some people out there shortchange the consistency of winning. It's it's astounding when you really let the numbers sink in uh, of the zero and one and two loss seasons over and over and over and over, which for Ohio State actually even go back to the latter portion of the Jim Trestle age in which you well know if you take out the Luke Fickle year that you go back to 2005 and the Big Ten record for Ohio State every year has either been zero or one loss in the Big Ten. Yeah. Since 05. They've been a machine. There's no question about it. Uh, uh, Meyer, uh, his seven teams all won division championships. They were ineligible for the conference championship his first year, but the league said you can still call yourself the division champion because you were undefeated, which was a nice thing. Um, I don't know. It, it, it uh, is a, a very difficult act to follow. Ohio State fans, uh, you know, this is when Ohio State needs you the most, I guess, is what I think uh, going forward in 2019. Anybody can be a fan when things are going great. It's when uh, there's been a transition, there's been a change, uh, there's been uh, a changing of the guard in this instance, and you just wonder that, uh, you know, this is when uh, Ryan Day and the, the coaches he has on his staff and the players, I mean, I looked at the two deep today, Mark, and, you know, Haskins is kind of on the fence. I think Draymond Jones is gone. I think Michael Jordan, the offensive lineman, is probably gone. Uh, there may be one or two others who would contemplate it. Haskins is probably in that group. I think all things equal, he would have come back. But in the last three games, he's thrown for 1,300 yards and accounted for 17 touchdowns in three games. 17 touch almost – Six touchdowns a game he's accounted for in the last three games, running and throwing, and thrown for 1,300 yards, 433-yard average uh, per game the last three games, uh, Maryland, Michigan, and Northwestern. And so he's got a very difficult decision on his hands. He's in New York City uh, this weekend for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. I envision it'll be Kyler Murray or Tua Tagovailoa winning the the Heisman and, and Dwayne probably finishing third, but his numbers were every bit as good as anybody else's. And then get through the finals week next week and begin preparation uh, to play Washington, uh, the last game in the Rose Bowl. And uh, Dwayne has said when he gets back from the Rose Bowl, he will sit down with Ryan Day, uh, possibly Urban Meyer and whoever else, and try and chart out uh, what his future plans are. His family very much believes in education. He'd have a chance to come back and get his degree. But when you're one of the top 10 picks in the NFL draft, which uh, Kuyper and some of them are starting to think he could be, uh, it's kind of hard to turn down that opera, that situation to set your whole family up for life. So uh, going to be interesting. He loves college football. He loves play. I know Maryland, a New Jersey guy who went to high school in Maryland, loves Ohio State, and uh, is finding it hard to extricate himself from Ohio State. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I think, uh, you know, whether he's back or not, Ohio State will still be in the thick of this thing a year from now. Okay. We encourage everyone to uh, check out Steve's work at uh, Bucknuts, bucknuts.com. Uh, 247 Sports Platform for Ohio State Athletics. Uh, Steve, we appreciate the time. Know that uh, you've got not only this, but a lot of basketball to look over as well, and uh, it never stops. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, Mark. Take, Take care. care.